it hit me that I wanted to work for the Park Service five or six years ago or so. I like to say that I had an early midlife crisis um, <laughs> in my mid-30s. had a fantastic job, uh, and fantastic in terms of money, but it was probably the worst job I've ever had in my life and was not happy. Not afraid to say that that job put me pretty close to the edge. But I'll never forget this moment. I was in the kitchen preparing dinner and the Ken Burns documentary, I loved it, it was on. I think it was episode two or three. And I saw this black and white picture of four or five park rangers with their flat hats on. And it was like somebody hit me with a frying pan. That's it. That's what I needed to do. It was very frustrating at first. Submitted well over 200 applications. And I got one email from Grand Teton National Park about, uh, if you're interested in fee collections, email us back. I didn't email back because I didn't feel like I was interested in that. But uh, it led to another moment, one of those aha moments. You either go do some volunteering or you're going to be unhappy the rest of your life. You chose life, really. And that was an incredibly brave thing for you to do. you got two daughters and you're leaving this very well-paying, good benefits job and you're going to become a volunteer <laughs> at a national park. It was rough for a couple of years, but finding this National Park Service job saved my life. My path was a lot different in that I was very fortunate to get a state park ranger job right out of college. After five years, I had a good state job too. But I made that jump to um, become just a seasonal ranger for the National Park Service. But I was young, I was restless, and um, I wanted to see the whole world. I eventually uh, did get the dream of living overseas and working in wildlife conservation in the African bush. And my old ranger boss from the Ohio State Parks came to visit me. <laughs> then, well, we fell in love. <laughs> so I, I had to uh, figure out a way to get back to Ohio. And uh, when I did, I was unemployed. And I heard about this Hopewell Culture National Historical Park seasonal ranger position. I was like, what is so interesting about people who heap dirt on their dad? <laughs> I actually said those words. I'm ashamed of them now. But I went to uh, my partner and I said, uh, gee, there's this job, but I'm, you know, I'm not very enthusiastic about it. And she didn't say a word. She just went over to the bookshelf and pulled off a copy of Squire and Davis. These men in the 1800s who had drawn these magnificent earthworks before they were destroyed, the Native Americans. And I was captivated immediately. I saw what these octagons and squares and circles and immense earthwork complexes. So I was fortunate enough to get the job, and I became absolutely bitten by the Hopewell bug. And I became almost evangelistic about these earthworks and how people in Ohio don't realize that they were the center of this magnificent culture 2,000 years ago, and their achievements are off the charts. I'm a firm believer that these small national parks really are the backbone of the National Park Service because they're our stories. They're stories of who we are as Americans. These are historical parks, and they all have intriguing stories to tell, don't they? They I do. Mean, and know. it's here in Ohio. Yeah. Who'd have thought? 